Uh, you mentioned this trip down south in, I think it was 1962. Right. Uh, it strikes me as incredible. You were still a student at Brandeis. You were writing for the Brandeis newspaper. Uh, and you went down there and you met Fannie Lou Hamer, James Meredith, uh, and even had lunch with William Faulkner. How dinner. did that, how did, uh, dinner, even better. How did that come about? Well, there was a man at, at Brandeis uh, named William Higgs, who was a, a fellow, Lasker fellow, and one of the only sort of white lawyers in Mississippi, graduate of Harvard Law School, and one of the very, very few lawyers at that time who would represent uh, civil rights cases. And for some reason, and I cannot remember why exactly, he asked me and two other fellows to go with him to Mississippi in, you know, what was it, you know, middle of the year, kind of intercession, 10 days. We drove down. And this was, in a sense, just before the civil rights movement really came to fruition. And so it was an amazing 10 days because we were able to meet everybody and see everything. And, you know, I was a young man from New York. I was stunned by what I saw in Mississippi and, and the level of the degree of poverty. And there is a funny journalistic story. I met James Meredith. And uh, I said to Mr. Meredith, who was applying to go to Ole Miss and was going to go in the following fall, listen, I said, Jim, why don't you write me a letter about why you want to go to Ole Miss? And he did. And the following fall, in October, when he, whenever it was when he en enrolled, we had in the little Brandeis newspaper, world exclusive, James Meredith on why I want to go to Ole Miss. And if you go deeply into the morgue of the New York Times, the first clip with my name in it is a clip from AP pickup that the Brandeis Justice had an exclusive with James mm -hmm. Meredith. And I guess, you know, when something like that happens, you've been to Mississippi, you had this little bit of business, you say, well, you know, journalism is, a, is, is in fact something I'd like to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned Bob Bernstein now. Let's go to the years of publishing. Um, how do you begin at the age, I guess you were in your 40s, in a 40. totally new profession? And I think you once said something like you applied some of the same tools you had learned as a journalist in the world of publishing. What did you mean uh, when it comes to McNamara, for example? What journalistic tool would you use to get a good book out of him? Well, the first thing I'm is that- I'm talking about Robert McNamara. I'm, everyone knows, former yeah. Secretary of Defense uh, presided over the war in Vietnam. Well, the thing, very simple explanation of why I was able to do it at Random House is I didn't know what I wasn't supposed to do. So I did everything. And until somebody told me to stop. <laughs> when I complained about some small piece of bureaucracy, Bernstein looked at me without a smile and he said, Peter, keep your eye on the books. If the books work, everything will be fine. If the books don't work, nothing will save you. It was really good advice. And that's what I did. I sort of kept my blinders on what the books were. McNamara came along um, in, a, in a, I'd been there a while already, uh, probably 10 years. And he wanted to write his full autobiography. And um, we acquired the book. And since I had sort of slightly knew McNamara from Washington, and that was my specialty and so on. So I became the editor. And I said, Bob, look, people mostly want to know what you have to say about Vietnam. So forget, you know, dwelling on the, your childhood and when you were the president of the Ford Motor Company and so on. Write the Vietnam piece first. And he went away and came back with 100,000 words. And we then spent 18 months working on those words. I have the transcripts, I have the tapes. What they were, were a very, very sustained exercise. He had a young historian who was his researcher. I had a young editor who was working with me, talking him through. And on one of the very last sessions, I, I, the subject was the mall on the Vietnam Memorial on the mall. And he kind of just blurted, he said, look, the war was wrong, terribly wrong. We owe it to future generations to explain why. And I said, that's the book. And it was, in, its, in essence. When the book was published, it was hugely controversial. The New York Times said that, in effect, 
Robert McNamara should not have a restful night of sleep after what he did and the fact that he didn't say what he knew for 25 years. And it was very, very, very contentious. Yeah, what was his reaction to the McNamara? controversy? Well, yeah. Yeah, I thought there was one particularly bad night uh, at Harvard where he was harangued by a Vietnam vet in a crowded meeting and he finally blurted shut up. And I thought that was going to be the end, that he would come to me the next day and say, Peter, this is just beyond me. I just, you know, no. In fact, the next morning he came, knocked on my door and said, no, I've got to do this. I know why they're angry, but I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's a, a very small little additional anecdote. Remember David Harris, who was one of the great anti-war protesters of the 60s, president of the Stanford student body, married Joan Baez, went to jail for a year, you know, because he burned his draft card or whatever. And we sent him to Vietnam in the 90s to find out what it was in this place that he so devoted his life to. And McNamara and David Harris happened to be in the office on the same day. And of course, I was responsible for both books. So I introduced them. McNamara's book was finished. And he gave a copy to David Harris. And I wrote David Harris and said, well, what did he say? And he said, he wrote to David Harris with admiration, Robert McNamara. And Harris said, I was stunned then and I'm still stunned. Yeah. Later, you know, Errol Mars did the film The Fog of War. And I like to say, or I choose to say, that Bob was never forgiven, but at least he was understood. Yeah. The United um, States was a, was, went into Vietnam not knowing what we were doing, and we failed miserably. And it's a, it's a lesson we did not really learn. 